What's up, everyone? My name is Patrick. I'm Anna. Anna. And we are The Sentient Life. If you are not familiar with our family, we actually decided to pack up our kids, dogs, home, and said, let's do a remote year starting in June of 2021. And this is our very first podcast. So if you are listening or watching in some format, we want to say thank you. Thank our, you, Mom. <laughs> we, uh, we don't think our lives are that interesting. And um, we'll let the... Uh, the audience tell us if it is or not, but you know what? We thought at the very least, we're going to make the memories, we're going to share the experiences, and we're going to be able to look back on this from years. So if for any reason um, we can have any positive impact on any of you, that's awesome. That's thumbs up for us. So uh, cool. don't judge us too harshly because we're going to be talking about some some cool topics, but then also some difficult ones. A little vulnerability here and there, a little yeah. splash. I just... I have to disagree, though. I find us interesting. But what I've learned over time is not everyone finds what I find interesting Dude, interesting. I am, I am a big deal in my head. You know? I'm Self-proclaimed a big, I'm a, I'm a big awesome. deal in my head. <laughs> and then I get out of bed and remember I'm not that big of a deal. Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay, so earlier, Patrick and I did something fun. Um, I wrote down the most common questions that I feel like family and friends, because that's really the only people that know what we're doing right now. The most common questions that family and friends have asked us over mm -hmm. the last like few months. So I asked them and Patrick and I each had to give one word answers and I wrote them down. Um, and some of them I can already tell where like I can't wait to hear yeah, your reasoning totally. behind some of these. So I'm just going to go through because I feel like our just everyday conversation would get a little boring. So I'm going to like remind us of the question, say what our answers were mm -hmm. when we asked these questions. But especially for me, even, I mean, I'm your wife, but I feel like I need you to elaborate on a couple of these. Okay. Okay. So the first question that Patrick and I answered, mm -hmm. what has been the biggest struggle on this trip so far? You said sleep. I said trailer. Sleep, really? You feel like you're not getting very much sleep? Um, yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm a morning person. I'm a morning person. Uh, she knows this. But um, one of the unique things about us doing this travel was that we're still working or doing some work. You know, Anna's taking a step back, but I'm still involved in work. And because the people I work with are East Coast, and we've been mostly Mountain Time uh -huh. and now West Coast, yeah, I'm finding myself getting up around five in the morning to prepare for the workday. And then start a few meetings. It's cool because I'm done, you know, maybe 10, yeah. 30, 11. But um, I still want to be up late and enjoy things. And so I'm just sleeping less. And then, you know, weirdly enough, when we were in the mountains, like uh, in the Rocky area, yeah. I don't know if it was altitude or what it was. Oh. But like I, I just I did, felt so rejuvenated but didn't have much sleep. Now I'm back on sea level and I'm just exhausted. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I feel like I need to read research on that because let's just go back to also the altitude. I, if you've never gone, I, I mean, people would talk about training at altitude before we left. Everyone kept saying, Hey, just be careful for altitude sickness. Um, wow. Denver mile high city. That's so high. And it was like, what? I mean, I grew up in West Texas, which if you don't know is just flat for years. Mm. Um, and then moved to Florida. So I feel like the grand majority of my life has been flat and low. And that first week in Denver, I, like, it was awful for uh, both. I mean, I, I I just wanted to mail it in every morning. Even the kids. It was so... Patrick and I had been working out so hard. So hard before we left. The goal was to get ourselves into this big habit of working out all the time. So we get to Denver and I go out. I mean... I did 250 miles with my friend Pam before we left. So I'm feeling like the resident. In, in one month. You in one month. In one month. Yeah, now. And in, not in one weekend. I'm not an ultra marathoner. In one month, we completed 250 run, walk. I mean, it was it was exercise. We did a couple walks, but it was like speed walk. And that was at the end when it was getting struggly. But we finished 250 miles. I think it's more than I ran when I trained for a marathon. 
So I go out for that first run in Denver and legit like could barely get through a mile. I look down. I usually run nine minute mile for those that like care about that stuff. Nine minute mile on a good long run. I could not get that damn time under like 10 minutes the whole time we were there. It was so hard at that elevation. Like double up on your COVID mask and go for Mm. a run. So I feel you on the sleep because- Gosh, it's um, it, it was pretty amazing, you know. Like well, another thing too is it's summertime, so you know it's now July. We started in June, um, you know it's long days. And the other thing too is in the mountain, and now as we get to the west, for whatever reason, like it's getting so light early, like you know, like literally five o'clock. It's it's like full light. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like twenty one you know? hour day. But I'm, but I'm finding Alaska. myself. I mean, it's like for instance, I'll I'll have like a a 5 30 a.m meeting 8 30 a.m east coast time and i'm just like rush out 5 15 brush my teeth don't water my face i'm just like i don't even have time to even put anything in my body and i'm just by the time i'm like get to the camera for this like zoom meeting or whatever it is i'm just rub my eyes and i just i act like i've been up forever but like you just forget the people on the east coast forget that i'm three hours behind you know so anyways point is it's got its value but sleep has been my issue okay mine was the trailer it feels like it was ages ago, but do you remember the first week with the trailer? All right, let, um, let me just, before you go, yeah. let me just paint the picture. <laughs> first, our family has heard about this. Our first day with the trailer, okay? So we're packing up the house. We're staying in New Smyrna. That's where we're leaving on this trip from. So there we are. Patrick, for reasons I will not divulge on this call, Fell asleep very early the night before we left. Very early. Yeah. So I get everything packed. Brendan Lori, my friend Brendan Lori, if anyone hears this, he's the culprit for that reason. Yes. So. yes. Yeah. They were they were occupying themselves while I got everything packed up. And Patrick just had so much fun. He fell asleep at like 5 p.m. So I get everything all packed. So I had very little sleep that night, speaking of sleep. So I'm like go mode in the morning, you know, where it's like you're so exhausted that your adrenaline's kicking. So you're actually sharper than you are when you're like well rested because you're just, yeah, here we go. So Patrick's outside. His one job is just hook up the trailer, right? I did it all. It just, it's got to get loaded in. It's got to get all set. Yeah. So he's out there. He hooks up the trailer. We load up, you know, oh, okay, here we go. And had a little bit of that, like, what the F are we thinking moment. Get in the car, deep in my head. We start driving. The trailer falls off. Fall, falls, right falls right off. Falls right off the Falls car. off the, the, the ball on, on the hitch. And, and I, I just, I guess when I latched it in, it didn't, it just didn't catch. I mean, you have to. If you've done this before and I hadn't, it looks like it's actually on the ball, but it's not fully on there and you won't know it until it bounces a little bit and then boom, falls right oh, off. Oh, it and bounced. So, and, it uh, bounced right Now we had the off. chains on the back, so, you know, it didn't, we didn't lose the trailer, but, you know, we started hearing the drag sounds. We knew what's up. So. Oh, yeah. And then we're out there putting it back on. And I mean, if you're not nervous already, I think that was the moment where I was like, we can't even so then get on down the road. Everything's okay. You know, no one's dying. The kids are like, Whoa. already we're cursing this thing. Like, why did we pack so much? What were we thinking? So we get to our first stop. It's an overnight stop. It's in Atlanta. We're so exhausted in the car with crazy kids the yeah. whole drive up there. It's about 10 p.m. We've been driving a long time. So just, exhausted. Just, again, if if you have children, you know, when you're traveling in the car, we learned this because we had not really done road trips with our kids before. You have to add thirty percent to whatever <laughs> Google says, okay? And that this that takes out any other car accidents. It just the, every gas station stop is forty five minutes. Everyone's got to go to the bathroom. Everyone's got to peruse every aisle of the gas station for all the snacks. You know the dog's got to come out. So, you know when they say eight hours to get to Atlanta, you know we're probably we're more like eleven, and uh, we get it's like there, a kid layover. We get there by ten thirty. I'm exhausted and driving all day, and now what happens? Oh, Patrick just happens to rent like the one Airbnb in Atlanta that has the strangest, highest incline I've ever seen. Maybe it was just because I knew we had to drag the trailer up. Yeah. It's on the main road. It's on a busy main road. Yeah. 
and we're coming up on it. And we're like, we got this. So we like configure, do we back it in? Do we just pull it in? Yeah. We think we're ready to rock. He's going to maneuver it. And he starts to go in and the thing just bottoms right out. Yeah. So bottoms right out. Couple lessons. <laughs> Not only the trailer, obviously, but one, if, if you're, if you're pulling a trailer, so I learned then afterwards that when I go to look at Airbnbs, I have to scroll into the map area and they don't give you the address, but I kind of compare as the crossroads and then I go to Google Maps. I, I don't look at for Airbnbs on a main road. I try to, to see if there's an incline of any sort because I've got to you know put a trailer up there and I couldn't do it. I mean, I try to pull up literally this is a 40. This is close to a 45 degree incline and I go to pull this thing and and, and basically where the hitch and then the trailer meet, they kind of, they make an apex in a way when I go to pull my car up and it just drags the concrete. There's no way it's going to do it. So we ended up having to um, go down the street. We found, <laughs> we found a church really close by with a parking lot. We we're going to do that, but it looked kind of like a sketchy area. Then we found a hotel with a uh, parking garage and we were once, weren't sure if the trailer would make it through the basically the, the high, highest point of the parking garage, but we got it in there. And then we also are figuring like, well, you know, we got locks on here, but maybe someone's going to steal our stuff. So, you know, again, this is 1030 to 1045. Day I, one. I pull in this Day parking garage. One. I'm cursing this thing. <laughs> and, um, you know, kids are actually still awake, ironically. So we pull the trailer off, leave it there, lock it up, take what we need, then drive to the house and uh, stay the night and then go the next morning. And hey, thank God it's still there. No damage, no issues. Um, I don't know. People probably saw a floor license plate and they said these guys are crazy. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe the real issue is uh, just we're flatlanders. Flatlanders. <laughs> oh, how about when the next day we're feeling good about ourselves? Do you want some water? I do want some water. Thank you. Uh, we're feeling good about ourselves. We get it into a parking lot to get everything loaded back up. And <laughs> we didn't realize why people always apparently put bricks by the tire. So Patrick starts tossing all of our luggage into the trailer. And what does the trailer do? Mm. It rolls down the hill. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's lightly <laughs> raining. The con It's kind of slippery in the concrete. It's at a slight decline. Slight, not heavy. I don't have it hooked up to the car yet. And I'm you know, tossing things in and out and it's just causing a little bit of friction and then boom, all things starts just going. I mean, and her and I look at each other and I mean, I literally do what you would expect, which is I just go to the front and just start leaning back on it and just do everything I can to stop it. It didn't have any breaks. Now it does have two little like kickstand legs that you could put on there, but um, we just weren't in a position to do it at that time. So, I mean, I'm literally, I got like the speed course in all of 36 hours on everything not to do with this trailer. Yeah. Well, I feel like it rolls right into the next question. Who is most patient when traveling? You said you. Did I lose my I cool then? Did me. I start cursing or kicking or punching things? Did I? No, did I? I, I mean, I don't, I don't recall. Honestly, yeah. I had forgotten these stories until we brought them up. So yeah. no, I don't think you did. I'm most patient in this, Wait, in this trip. Not in, not, not in general or all the time or in usually trips. One time in London, uh, we had an issue. <laughs> Again, I, again, I don't want to make a long story, but long flight to London. Children are much younger. We get an Uber from the London airport to our Airbnb. We're standing on the street corner with all of our luggage. Okay. And for whatever reason, these people in the Airbnb cancel on us last minute. We don't have a place to stay. Oh, no. It was the wrong Airbnb. It was the... the That's what the, it was. The, yeah. The one that was that we actually reserved was not the one they showed us. It they, was a different they, year. And we, they, they said, said oh, the other one is not available. It flooded. Something fl it flooded, I think. I don't. Yeah, there was some excuse. It was a weird situation. They just wanted us to start the stay so they could like pull yeah. one over on us. Basically. It was it, it was a total bait and switch. But again. Um, Homeless on the corner. So we're staying on the corner. It's hot. It's July. And, you know, one of our kids is crying. And so I, I hail another Uber. I said, okay, we're going to figure this thing out, right? Let's just get back in the car. I'm sweating. Let's put our stack luggage in there. And this Uber pulls up and the guy won't drive us because we don't have a car seat for Carson, who I think is like two at the time. Maybe two and a half. Yeah. He said he didn't have enough room. Well, that's what it was. He said he didn't have enough room for us. And so, and so our luggage. And then when you were like, you can't do that. He's like, he pulled the like, oh no, technically I'm not livery. So you couldn't. Yeah, so 
I mean, one one Uber drives us with the kid, never says a word, drops us off, doesn't care. Next guy's like, no, nah, I can't do it. And that was just like, that was it. So I'm just literally like standing in the street corner. I'm cursing like F this city, F this town. I'm going home right now. But I not mean, in your head. No, I, as I'm saying, I'm literally saying this out loud. <laughs> Across I, like, the like, streets like, of London. Like a mentally ill person, you know, on a, on a, on a street corner. I mean, I'm kicking the luggage I got to remember, like, so I have three, three factors that, that really put people over the edge. And you got to, if you, if you have two of the three, like you're teetering on the, on the cusp of like insanity. And if you have all three, like, don't, don't mess with me. It's hot, hungry, and tired. So if I, I can be one of those and most humans, in my opinion, can be one of those and they can manage. You get two, you're on the edge. It's like, you know, I'm again, you need to start going back to the other way of, of, of status quo equilibrium, but when you get all three, when you hit the trifecta, when you basically get a, you know, when you end up getting a, a hat trick on hot, hungry and tired, like watch out yeah. because yeah. I mean, it's way past hangry. This is like going to basically kill anything that comes in my path. So. Okay, so you know what? I will on that sentiment alone, I will give you most patient on this on trip. This trip. Thank you very much. I am most patient. <laughs> I patiently waited yes. for your answer to that. Um, so what do you wish you'd left behind? I think we both agreed to trailer and now everyone knows why. Um, what do you wish you had brought that you left behind? I said less for now, obvious mm. reasons. Trailer again. I said babysitter <laughs> <laughs> for obvious reasons, right? I wish I had brought a babysitter. I mean, it's not feasible. You got to realize, do we want to live with, with some babysitter? You can't do that. I mean, point is. It's not realistic, but yes, I wish there was a babysitter. Um, your mom's coming to visit in a week and a half or two weeks, so yeah. Hopefully, she doesn't hear this before then. She'll think we're just setting her up to come be a babysitter. No, no way. It's I wish I had a babysitter. Somebody. You know, this brings up a, something we talk about a lot. It's that the grass is greener always on the on the other side. Gosh, that didn't come out right. The grass is greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, Patrick and I love when we travel with family because there's a, you can, or if you travel with friends and you can kind of do the kid swap thing. Like I got all the kids, you go on a date, maybe the girls get some time, the guys get some time situation like that. It's amazing. So we've toyed with the idea in the past of having like an au pair or a travel nanny. I mean, I know that makes us sound bougie, not that we have available funds for something like that, but just more like, how about I give you young 18 year old, the opportunity of a lifetime to coexist in our family I and mean, see some really great places and you watch my kids most of the time. I mean, things can always be cut out to make it happen, but like, sure. Or I just, the idea and the thought of no pair or nannies, it's amazing. Amazing. I don't think that like suits our parenting style though. No. And so that's pretty much all it is. So. Well, and does it suit your personal space style? Like it's as lovely it is, as it is to have someone I know How about this. with the kids? It's no, no nanny or au pair would want to be staying with us on this trip. Four of the seven places we rented, the air conditioning <laughs> is broken. Yes. Four of the seven. We've yes. been to seven different Airbnbs. Maybe it's people who rent homes. I mean, they're little things. I mean, the homes need to be, and I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. Four of the seven have had it broken and they've just been fixed. You know, so. But you know what's interesting is we have, just like the summer we went to London that you just referenced, Part of our MO is that we always choose places that are going to be glorious weather-wise. We, we live in Florida. Yeah. It is so hot in Florida. So we're always like, all right, we're going to go to this place that is like paradise in the middle of summer. Cool, refreshing. Mm -hmm. And then we get there and it's like 90, it's hotter than Florida. This has happened to us, I feel like, multiple times over the last few years. By the way, I'm using my foot to zoom out. I don't know if you can tell because you're not in the camera. So, uh, there we go. When you zoom, when you lean in, you're not in the camera. You're halfway out. Well, that was the issue I was having earlier because you had the camera kind of moved a little towards you, and so I was saying that I kept having to kind of oh, scoot it over. No, it's okay. I'm Lay good now. In. Here we are together. I also take two. I'm also a loud talker, so I didn't want to be like so close to the camera that I test, was. Test, test. This thing on. <laughs> this thing on. Is it working? Anybody hear me? <laughs> Don't stop. Believe. <laughs> next okay, question. Okay, next question. All right. What is your favorite experience so far? Anna? I said 
Mount Rainier. I almost said Manitou Incline, but I feel like that was that was one of my favorite because it was so intense. It was like such an intense experience. I just love the mental space you go to when you do something that's like furiously intense and then you do it and you're so proud of yourself. I mean, no one can take that away from you. Mm. But I will say Mount Rainier was so unassuming, unassuming in the sense that I feel like when I kind of drove in, you can see it. I mean, I've been looking at the top of this mountain since we got here, everywhere we go. I mean, it's just this beacon, you know, very Lord of the Rings beacon in the city. Yeah. Then we get there, we're driving and I'm like, oh yeah. And then as I'm reading, because that's how I roll when we go somewhere, I usually prepare to go as we're driving in. And I'm like, oh, who knew? There's glaciers up there. You know, everybody else in the world knows this. I didn't. So I'm reading my elementary book for my kids about this place, how neat it is. I'm just kind of falling in love with it as we go in. And then we go to Paradise Meadow. And there's something about the combination of the mountain and the waterfall and the wildflowers I literally felt like I was in a movie or oh, like it was unreal. Yes. I mean, you could see you could see the, the coloration in the glacier ice as we got closer. Oh, you could see gorgeous. the hues of blue and the clarity. Um, yeah. It, it, well, for me, it was the closest I'd been to a mountain top with the snow cap yeah. with the glaciers. Um, well, and it's an active volcano. Yeah. So just this idea that there are these 25 massive glaciers in the rock. It's like a river of ice running down this rocky mountainous structure. But at the tip top, there's steam poking out because, oh, yeah, you know, it could blow. There's magma under there. I mean, I don't know. I, maybe it's the energy yeah. of the volcano. I don't know what it was, but I mean, I just could not stop staring. And I think it's been a long time. I mean, the, only, the last time I remember feeling like that was when we were in Ireland and we did the cliffs. Yeah. And remember, we just, more. yes, and we just mm. kept staring, and you just kept saying over and over again, I feel like I'm in The Hobbit. I feel like yeah. I'm in The Hobbit. It's, a, it's the greatest photo I've ever taken with an iPhone um, yeah. without having to edit it, and it just like, you know, it was just epic. Um, for me, and I said to you earlier, well, so if if I had caught a fish with my friend Brendan in trout fishing, that would have been my number one experience, because <laughs> I am the world's, and I, and I don't mind admitting this, I'm the world's worst fisherman. My son loves fishing. He's four. He constantly asks me to take him fishing. We have a little pond by our house back in Orlando. I never, ever catch a fish with him. I mean, I try everything. Um, our neighbor, Spencer, will take him out and they catch a fish one or two every time, you know? So he, so, my, so Carson thinks that, like, like, this is just how it goes every time, you know? And so, um, anyway, so I go trout fishing with my friend Brendan. We, we hire a guide. You know, I'm feeling pretty awesome. I'm doing, I'm, I'm feeling sure I have a movie. I'm just whipping that thing. And we just didn't catch any fish. They said it was too hot that day. It's fine. I'll try it again. But had I caught a fish, it would have been number, my number one because I just, I don't know, I wanted to feel like I am a fisherman. And then, um, but since that, uh, I would say that my favorite moment was here in Seattle. We took a ferry to Bainbridge Island and then there was a playground and on like the beach shore area. And I was able to basically stand by the water and be at sea level. And then I could see in the distance very clearly mm -hmm. um, Mount Rainier with the snow caps. And it was July. So, you know, I'm getting what I consider to be the best of both worlds. I mean, if you can imagine, where would you want to live? Well, I'd want to live in a place where I could be by the water, lake, ocean, beautiful place. And oh, by the way, I had the mountains right there in the background. And I got to just kind of feel that even for a moment. And I just thought that was really cool. You felt so, so sentient. I felt I sentient. I was I was feeling it i was feeling it how about that hell or the seaplane today now that we're talking about all this i'm like that was i, I won't let's see now i'm cheating yeah. i'm doing two experiences so we took a, we that took a, was nuts took a seaplane tour today um i mean that's nothing new i'm sure you guys have either heard of it done that i mean believe me we're not the first ones to ever think about it. we just wanted to see the city from a different perspective so many cool things um to be able to experience so we did a short one a 20 minute tour i just wasn't sure how the kids would handle it um, or me, I, I tend to get like seasick, but, um, <laughs> but it was really a lot of fun. I've actually got some friends back home who are pilots and they've got uh, seaplanes themselves. So they've been kind of begging me to, to join the club. Um, but I got, I got three big hurdles to join their club. One, <laughs> I need to move to a house on a lake back when I get back to Orlando. Okay. That's a hurdle in itself. Um, Detail. yeah, right. Two, 
I need to become a pilot. It's going to take me about a year and a half from base what I understand to study this. and put time. Which that's going to happen. There's no I doubt mean, about you're that. You're so good at studying. <laughs> And three. Yeah, you, and I mean, three. I remember you in college the way that you would. I need just. to buy a plane. So, so I have three hurdles or now goals, in my opinion, um, to take care of to be able to kind of do this. But it's definitely happening. There's no doubt about it. And I'm good at studying at things that I know yeah, have an outcome to them. No, this like, is true. A means to an end. So. You are the perfect. Like I think of you all the time when I'm homeschooling the kids because. I I love school, mm-hmm. passionate about school, but I think it's because I liked to perform for other people. I liked to compete and be the best, and I, I enjoy learning about the stuff. Whereas you are like, if you can't give me a good reason for me to learn this thing that I don't care about, I'm not doing it. Yeah. And our kids are like that. Like if they find something that they want to do, and it's like get out of their way. They're like, it's like Carson with the fishing. Yeah. Every, are we gonna go? Are we gonna? Go? Yeah. Uh, crazy. Same. Okay. What experience is coming up that you're most excited for? Um, I, I said snow skiing. I, I've gone a few times. I'm pretty bad. Um, I didn't grow up snow skiing. And um, and so I, I plan to take some lessons. But I'm looking forward to it. I mean, they, people say the best skiing in the U.S. are, you know, outside of like Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, I think kind of around Lake Tahoe area. I believe um, even like Taos, New Mexico. So like any three of those, based on the way we plan our trip, like we, we're going to be there in ski season. So that's going to be an epic thing for me. Uh, the kids too. They've never uh, skied before. Yeah. And guess what? What? Remember how you wanted a babysitter? Yeah. They have ski school. Yeah. That's, that's so the awesome. kids can go to ski, ski school. But I'll be on the bunny slopes with them for a while. But then, I mean, we could like go ski on our own yeah. and then go back and, you know, drink hot chocolate or whatever yeah. people do. And the other thing is like maybe some of the mountainous structures in Utah. Um, mountainous people, structures. Like there's a lot of like <laughs> specific areas like Moab and different places. So I don't really know. It, I, it's hard. It's like, I don't know what I don't know. So I'm, I'm making an educated guess on just something fun, but you know, we're going to see some epic stuff. I'm excited. I said camping. I don't, now I'm like, I don't even know if I'm that excited. I'm looking forward to it. It falls into the Manitou. You're see, see Manitou. You saw post Manitou. I'm like, God, that was amazing. We're amazing. Patrick, like, oh, we should do it again. I, we, I wish we could do it every morning. But then going into these things that we choose to do, I feel like are very daunting. So I have a friend from college, Skylar. I said, hey, I see. I have a friend from college too named Skylar. Oh my gosh. Did well, we go to the same oh, college? Man. Oh, it's so Skylar, weird. Skylar, if you listen or watch this, we're friends too, I think. <laughs> Yes. I think. So I know, but I'm just saying for the we reference have a friend from college. of this story. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I reach out to my friend Skylar because I see on Facebook that she's in the Seattle area and that she is training to hike Mount St. Helens. So I'm like, oh, she's a hiker. I and Patrick, I will give him credit for this too. We yeah. are signed up to do our first trail run a half marathon trail run so this is a little different anyone that's a runner knows you're not flat road it is like a half marathon in the mountains so we're doing it in november so i say hey skylar i'm doing this november i see you like to hike would you want to go out and do a long hike with me sometime it'd be awesome i would love it she comes back yeah you want to do an overnight backpacking trip um by the way i've never done an overnight backpacking trip but i'm like yeah of course i would love to with the kids uh uh, yeah okay you know i'll have my husband stay home with our baby so you can leave patrick home so it'll just be two moms no cell phone service with our kids overnight hike how hard could this be and i'm like hell yeah girl you know so bear spraying guns (laughs) no no guns no guns no absolutely no guns um, I am going to rent a satellite phone thanks to the advice of a friend. Mm. And I def- I have two cans of bear spray. Then my mom is coming out because after this, we're going to Vancouver. Mm-hmm. So my mom's coming out and I'm like, guess what, mom? You just happen to be coming right before we do this camping trip. So my mom's coming too. So um, I think as a mother, she appreciates my adventurous yeah. side um, as the mother coming to visit. I'm not so sure how she's going to feel going along that. with what she's going along with what, what you're <laughs> planning. I mean, it wouldn't have been her choice, but she's going to go along with it. No. Yeah. But so that's what I'm excited about. Hmm. Okay. Are you coming back in July, 2021? 
No, uh, we missed. Oh wait, we missed, we one. missed one. Okay. Who is harder to travel with, kids or dogs? I think people will be surprised at our answer. On the count really of three, do. ready? Yes. One, two, three. Dogs, dogs. dogs. And, and uh, it's partially it's partly because we're bougie about our dogs. So, um, <laughs> you know, again, I, I feel like you know. Yeah, you watch some of our video and stuff, or even if you're friends with us on social, you'll see like, you know, I, I have almost as many pictures of my dogs doing stuff as as my kids. Um, I treat them like children. They're ten years old actually. They were this, our first kid. Yeah, they're ten years old this month. Very healthy, awesome. Um, one of the biggest factors and hurdles we had to decide when we were actually going to take this trip was we we didn't do long trips because. We didn't know do our dogs. And we have a great friend named Vanessa who would actually back home would be one to always stay at our home oh, she's and take care of our dogs and feed them and walk them. And she'd go to work and come back. But like, you know, we want someone there just to kind of be with them. We didn't want to put them in a kennel. So, uh, you know, we'd always do that on our vacations, which is totally cool. Except that now we're going to go for a year. So it's like, mm, we got to figure out how to make this happen. So, you know, back of our SUV, we've got a Suburban. We, we try to like make a little dog bed. We put a few blankets. We try to make it nice for them. The reason we needed the trailer. Yes. We needed a trailer just because <laughs> we, got, we need room for the dogs in the back. They're both 50 pounds or short-haired border collie. Anyways, so they're brother and sister from the same, um, the same litter. And uh, But one of the dogs, Champ, who's the black and white one, he... He's just a little neurotic, you know, he scribbles is the white one. She'll sit back there and she'll just be shaking like just aggressively with fear, you know, as we just start the car up and start driving. And eventually as she just stands there, she'll lay down and she'll get settled in. But Champ had developed this and, and we don't know where it happened, but like he just came to realize that he could very adventurously kind of work his way from the back of the car through the kids up on the console between, you know, my seat driving and Anna's and then go ahead and climb on her lap. And then he just wants to sit there. And, and we've tried putting barriers there. He doesn't care. He's going to go through it. Um, Anna spent, I think, probably five hours of the trip from Boise to Seattle with Champ on her lap, which is He's not like a weighted blanket, <laughs> which isn't really that safe, in my opinion. But I mean, it's like we have no other option to do. Um, and then just, you know, they're, they're healthy, so we're not having like major issues with them of any sort, but they're just neurotic. You know what I mean? Like Champ sees a squirrel, he barks at it and wakes up everybody in the house. And so we love them. And anyone who has dogs that deals with these same exact things um, today scribbles somehow. And, and she's scribbles is like the sweetest dog ever. But what most people don't realize is um, she's actually the savage one. Like like when she sees an animal, like a, a wild animal, she will do anything to catch this animal. Well, I couldn't find her today in the backyard of this house we're renting, and she had somehow gotten herself stuck and wedged under the wooden stairs like under the house. of the decking. <laughs> and I had to like reach down, grab her by her front legs, and just kind of slowly pull her across the gravel, which she's wincing. But like, I don't know how she got there in the first place, but I know it's probably because she saw an animal and her instinct kicked in, and she was like, bam, I'm going for this thing. So I lose sleep over what's going to happen with them. And, um, yeah, well, and ironically, we part of the reason we didn't do anything international yeah. is because they're 10. I mean, Patrick, yeah. we, Patrick and I got married almost 20 years ago. And then for 10 years, we lived in this, in a couple shoebox apartments mm -hmm. um, with like nothing. We, we both had jobs. We had a business. It was like, you know, how hard could we blow torch our candles? And then finally, we're like, we should settle down at the 10 year mark. Actually, maybe like nine year mark. It's like nine. And get dog. Well, Patrick wanted a dog for his birthday. Yep. And so we go to look at this dog, single dog that yeah. he wants. And we walk in, and what do you know? There's another one. They're litter mates. They're so cute. So, in all fairness, I'm the one that's like, we could totally handle two. You know, if we're going for one. It worked out, actually. I mean, Oh, they never chewed that much when mm. they were little. They played with each other. They haven't had separation. I mean, they are bliss. Uh, like the 10 years they've been alive, they we have an amazing dog food. We feed them. I mean, they have been such a blessing. So in our minds, we're like, this is going to be so hard taking this trip with these kids. It's going to be the kids like, oh, I have to school yeah. them. And they're, we the last time we traveled with them was pre-COVID. They yeah. were so hard to handle. So I think a lot of this is expectation. Yeah, We expected the kids to be so complicated. And then we thought well, the dogs, I mean, my God, they're like retired. They're going to just lay around or, or even better we're going to take them to national parks and walk with them and they're going to have like their second life oh. but of course 
as he mentioned with scribbles, they probably get us killed. <laughs> They're just crazy. They <laughs> the see they see park. another animal. They start wincing. I mean, they don't have a healthy fear that this um, elk or bear is going to kill them. No, um, they no. they think they can kill this bear. So th- that's They're our very, worry. Yes. But again, we're super bougie with them. In fact, I've I just wrote a script today actually because um, we did a custom dog food diet for their entire life because they were allergic to so much stuff. And I spent like $4,000 on vet bills the first year we had them of just like I'm allergy you, shots. I <laughs> these mean, dogs are going to live to 40. So, um, and now 10 years ago, custom, fresh, organic, whatever word you want to use, dog food that was like made to order was not a popular thing. But this company had just started in Orlando called Rick's Dog Deli. So shout out to Rick's. They've been loyal Woo-hoo. to us for 10 years. But then when we went on the trip. We're like, hey, we can't use them anymore. They would deliver it to our house, but um, but now there's a lot of companies out there. In fact, what I decided to do is I, I'm gonna do doing the trial of every one of these different um, dog food companies, and they do a two week trial and they give you a discount. And I'm I'm measuring all the different pieces about it, and I'm gonna rank them in a video and say, hey, here's the best one. Here's what I recommend. So um, if you guys are looking for some good custom dog food, I have to say honestly. Our dogs are mega, mega healthy. And I'm not the one to say, like, people stop me daily. They're like, how old are your dogs? They're like, 10? That, yeah. That's unreal. They, they look like they're five. I mean, they look so, so much active. younger. And I have to say, even though it's been expensive, if you care about your animals, I just think it's, you know, you're going to invest in health insurance for yourself and good health for yourself. Might as well do the same thing for your animals. Yeah, you know? yeah. for sure. Yes, yeah, so the dogs, I, I, I'm with you on that one. Are we coming back in July of 2021? Yeah, we're coming back. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we joke. We joke. You can only vagabond so long. I mean, we're coming back because we love school and we love babysitters, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're coming back. This is what I think. This is, my, this is my theory, but I don't really know. My theory will, is we will come back. We will set a goal to buy a home in the West, somewhere in the mountains of like Rocky Mountain area. Exactly. We'll set a goal for that. We'll, we'll make it a rental home and we'll spend two weeks or a month there per year. And or we will just then somehow try to plan out about four or five long vacations per year that are about two to three weeks each. Now, vacations are expensive. It's just because, you know, you're paying for short term. But I think we'll find a way to be able to just take more trips per year that are going to be like that. So I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I think we're going to end up one or the other. Gosh, I know. It's hard to know. I feel like our entire life has been make the plan so that you cannot do the plan. Yeah. I mean, because like, you know, I, if you've watched any of this stuff, if you see any videos we have on, on YouTube, I'll, I'll at some point make fun of or, uh, well, I'll make a jab at the influencers that, that actually were our inspiration because very few of them have kids or like expenses or just, I don't know, like rooted lives. And they're just living out of a van. I got to tell you, I, like, I'm so envious. I look at it. I'm like, grass is greener. I'm like, dang, I want to live out of a van, but not with the current situation we have. So <laughs> I, 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 you know, again, so when I look at it, I'm like, you know, for our lifestyle, our situation, we can do it. People do it. But I, I care about my insanity and I don't want to go that route. So. I'm so glad this is recorded because I've yeah. been trying to get you to live out of a tiny house yeah. for like five years now. And the fact that you've shifted and you'd be willing to live out of a van, we're getting a tiny house. I mean, for, for short instances, not like all the time. Are you going to buy? The, by the way, we, we priced vans. They're yeah. expensive. Oh, these, these I, don't, I call them conversion vans, but like Mercedes Sprinter. Different, there's so many different brands now that make these livable vans that you can customize. I was looking them up 250,000. Now, I was also looking up RV trailers to pull behind your SUV, which again, it's not as cool, but whatever. Um, they're like 30 to 40,000 in some cases, like that's way doable, you know. Yeah. Now, I don't know how I want to do pulling that puppy. I mean, I only have an eight foot trailer and now I got to pull a 30 foot RV, but um, options are there. We live in a convenient world with a lot of options, so one of them will bubble to the top. And at some point, or two months into this trip, within 10 months, you will most likely hear us talk about one of these avenues becoming a reality for us. So, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I just don't think we're capable of just going back. At this mm-hmm. point, like, will we go back? Yes. But you know what? I don't know if we'll go back the same people. No. Nope. Like, for sure not. And we let, la- I mean, I, it wasn't like we were escaping anything. We've said this before. 
you know, in videos and talking to people, we, there wasn't, it's not like we were leaving. We made this plan as kind of a like, hey, we're trapped in our house because of COVID. Let's go do this wild bucket list thing. And then everything opened back up and went back to normal. And it was like, well, shit, should we still yeah. do this thing? And so we just ripped the bandaid off. Well, would we do this again? Would you do this again? Two months in? Absolutely. I, you know what? Not only would I do it again, but I, I'm, see, I'm going to put this out there and then everyone will have to hold me to, accountable to it. I would love to do this again overseas when the kids are older. I've often said that my dream is to do it when the kids are in middle school for the sole reason that um, nobody looks back at middle school and goes, dang it, best years of my yeah. life right there like I just flourished high school I loved high school like I lo I loved college I loved high school elementary school was my jam middle school I had an oh, I was an athlete so I feel like that kind of kept me out of the mix I enjoyed the like two friends I had in middle school <laughs> but god those years are awful and so I I just I worry about the current situation that teens are faced with and preteens with phones and social media. I mean, I'm, this is no secret. I think every parent's struggle is you think, you know, and you don't know, like I worked in social media for a while and like, you think, you know, your kids intentions and what your kids are up to and you don't. And sometimes they don't like, they don't even know what they're in. So for that reason, I would love to, I think, do this same situation of extracting going immersing another experience then coming back and you know there you go kiddo enjoy high school yeah so cool. we'll see we'll see i mean i'm sure i'll be dragging two really whiny preteens with hormones yeah. raging and my luck they'll we'll go to australia and they'll fall in love with some australian babes <laughs> oh we have, we have friends in australia you know I, I would love to stay there too well so. that's my my double luck right yeah. we'll go and they'll fall in love with our friends kids and clint and Melissa, i'm looking wouldn't, at you wouldn't be bad um <laughs> i mean according according to our friends mary and bryden um our daughter vivian's already taken she's betrothed uh, she's yes. betrothed vivian is betrothed still a long way to go um so yeah i would do it again i've already see my brain's already checkboxing like I must have 40, 50 things I would do different already. You know, yeah. Just, um, Isn't that the amazing thing about travel? Like the more you do, the more you check, Yeah. the more you realize how little you've done. Mm -hmm. You're such a little, I, that's why I think what you said it the other day, what were you, you were talking about when you leave this sense of, you know, self-importance, not in this like overly egotistical way, but like you're just such a big fish in your own life you're responsible for so much as a parent, as an entrepreneur, like you just think you're so important. Like, gosh, if I drop the ball on anything, like it, it would just yeah. devastate me. And then you get out here. <laughs> That's true. And you're so insignificant. In the well, I was saying, the bison. I was talking to um, a couple of friends on a podcast a couple of days ago, which I was my first one. So it was cool and fun to do. And, um, I was just referencing that when you were in Yellowstone and you just see some of these like massive animals like that for me makes me feel very small. I'm like, this animal can kill me. This animal, I'm in their domain. They can do whatever <laughs> they mean, want. Like oh. I'm in this massive. The other thing too is, so I noticed when I was in the Western States, so I'm, I'm talking about like Colorado, I'm well, over South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana. I rarely saw any police officers. Rarely. I, I, I mean, I'm talking rarely <laughs> saw a police officer Why of any were you sort. Looking? No, I just you just used to in Florida. <laughs> just Florida. That's I mean, true. That's in Florida, you see them everywhere. You know, and I joke. You, you go work out at a gym. Well, one of my good friends is is, is a sheriff. <laughs> um, and, 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 and SWAT professional. So, but and so I'm in, I'm really intrigued by all the things he does. I, I ask him all these weird questions. But but you know, I joke about there's a website called FloridaMan.com because because in the news, Florida gets a bad rep. And usually the news reporter starts with uh, Florida man uh, committed this crime. Right. And so it's a really funny website to go to Florida man dot com. But so Florida has a ton of police officers, highly populated. But you don't see you rarely. I mean, I even told my friend Brendan, who was visiting, I said, dude, just check it out. You're rarely going to see a cop around here. And we didn't. And his thought was there's just so much landmass to be um, discovered where like 
what are the cops going to do? Someone goes missing. They're like, there's 10 things that could happen. Someone was murdered and dropped off a mountain cliff, right? Um, you know, they got eaten by a bear. Uh, they the got. Book we saw in Yellowstone that we were. Oh, there was a book in Yellowstone that was like um, stories of those who have died. In yeah. Yellowstone. And it was like, I mean, I'm not kidding. It was like as thick the as the Hobbit. Book. It was like <laughs> 300 pages. I, mean, I couldn't believe how thick it I was. I mean, so that's the people they know of that died. There's probably others without a story. So anyways, point is, you just feel so tiny when you're in this national park. And I think that the email I received where the customer or a client that's upset about our service is a big deal. And life goes on. The world will go on. Um you know, I, again, I believe right now we live in the most convenient world we've ever been able to live in. Okay. Things are pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that suck. There's no doubt about that. We also, and I'm just speaking for U.S. citizens, like we live in a country where like, you know, it, there's just a lot of options, you know, when it comes to even this tough year with with COVID. Oh, there's just, beyond you know, blessed. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not asking for government handouts. It's just that like, hey, look, they look and do what they can to help, you know, the American people and others step up, friends, community. Like there's just, dude, you just rarely see someone fall down and stay down. And so the way I view it, and um, I joked on the podcast was, if you watch This Is Us, uh, Randall and Beth play a game called Worst Case Scenario. And Anna and I kind of used to do that. We just didn't call it that. Like we wouldn't, we wouldn't call it like we wouldn't give it a title, but we would kind of play a little worst case scenario, not as detailed as they would do in the show. But um, ultimately, before we came on the trip, we played worst case scenario. We did. We we're like, worst case, what happens? What happens to our business? What happens to our family? What happens to our life? What happens to our health? What happens to our um, and, and as we played those out, there was no worst case scenario that could talk us out of this. No. Yeah. If anything, it kind of convinced us. Yeah. I, the, I, you know what? I think it stemmed from, there was a book we read years ago. It was a Dale Carnegie book. It's that stop worrying, start living. Mm -hmm. And he talks about that as like a mechanism in the book. Like you, if you have something that you're just kind of rounding the mountain on, you go, okay, what is the worst thing that could happen here? And you play it out. And then you very rationally say, okay, if that happened, what would I do? Then walk yourself through your solutions um, and I mean, the, in the book, they really, he just digs, like makes you go super deep into it. Like think through everything. How would you feel? What would you do? Who would you call? Who would you include? Blah, blah, blah. And I just remember that being so liberating. Cause he said a lot of times you'll think through the scenario and get to the other side and you're like, wow, that's actually amazing. I don't think I would hate that. You know, like something at work, it's awful. It's terrible. I, okay, so I get fired. I have to go find another job. I find another job. I have to relocate. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're looking for new jobs in another city because it doesn't sound so bad. And I think something that people don't realize is that good and bad are very hard to separate. Like often all of the most amazing things that you have and have experienced in your life come on the tail end of something just truly atrocious in some ways. Like we, yeah. we talk about that. And so I think that's when you just acknowledge that and go, you know what, even though this could go so wrong, look at all of these situations in my life that if I changed the negative, I lose so many of the things that are just meant to happen. Yeah. I mean, look, so far two months in the trip, a lot of amazing things, a lot of great memories, a lot of pictures that I can't wait to print and put on our wall back home. Yeah. Um, Love. Also a lot of suck. <laughs> okay. Like a lot of suck. And, um, I'm not comparing like our suck to yours. It's just that, you know, everyone's got something that sucks in their life at the moment. And so, uh, and so we deal with it, but the big picture positives are we're growing, uh, as a family, they like, meaning like as in our closeness, uh, I've got, uh, I'm having better conversations with my kids, more moments. Um, it's pretty awesome. We are spending obviously a ton of time together, <laughs> a ton, so which we already had a great relationship. It's just that like, you know, with the kids too, um, um, I'm actually growing in one particular area regards to business is I'm having to learn to let go and delegate and teach and train and, <laughs> and, and be patient. Um, something I've never done. And I have to say, honestly, like a lot of small business owners like myself, they 
don't grow as much as they want to for that exact reason. But I have, to, I have to be patient with the process, which is what I'm doing. We've got a lot of great people that work with our company. And um, so, yeah, there's a lot of positive. Like I'm, I'm doing my best to like disconnect and be aware. You know, <laughs> I am doing... well, it is easy when everywhere we go has no cell phones. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so done. Um, yeah, I can go on forever, but you know, it's it's uh, a lot of growing so far for sure, and so we won't be the same people when we get back. Um, it's gonna be different. <laughs> I just, sorry. I'm just sorry. Right, thinking about the hood. You know, let me give it. Just thinking about the hood. So, and um, this is good. Where'd he go? Oh, nice, nice question asking. Right.